Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another comparison video. Marvelous. And clearly, the fragrance we will be comparing is Chanel's Egoist. On the right, I have a 1990 splash bottle, 250 mil of the original release of Egoist. In the middle here, I have my bottle from 2019 of Egoist. On the left, I have my Egoist Cologne Concentrate. This was a, well, still is, a flanker that was released in, I want to say, 1993. Could have been 1992. Let's have a look. No, it was 1992. Yeah. Platinum Egoist came out in 1993. And I could have included Platinum Egoist in this video, but I'm going to be honest, I hate it. <laughs> and I sold it to somebody who was going to wear it because I had it and I was never going to wear it. It was actually sent to me in error about two years ago. Um, legend has it that Francois Demarchi was working at Chanel and after, after Egoise flopped, it was in a major, major commercial flop, uh, they decided they had to do something to sell some perfumes and they brought out Platinum Egoist, which did a lot better. But I don't like it. It has that headache smell, the ambroxan, the metallic kind of vibe. I really don't like it. Some people do, which is fine. I don't. You know? I don't. So I sold that and it's not included in my comparison. What I do have is something a little bit different, a little bit special. Um, when I bought the Cologne Concentrate and the Vintage Bottle, the person who was selling it was also selling a bottle of Bois Noir, and I didn't want to pay that because these two, these two fragrances cost me enough, and I wasn't sure how I would feel about Bois Noir. So he... decided that he would send me instead a little decant and that's what he did so i'll be comparing today bois noir with vintage ego east with modern ego east with the cologne concentrate which has been discontinued devastatingly um and i am very much looking forward to it i have not smelled the bois noir yet the other three, I know very well. The Bois Noir was the original. If you don't know the story, it was released in 1987 in Chanel boutiques. Um, and it was limited boutiques at the time. So you're talking places like London, Paris, Milan, um, Tokyo, New York, other big cities around the world, you know? Where, where there were like proper Chanel boutiques. I believe it was a success. Bois Noir. It was well thought of. It went down well. And they decided to re-release it in 1990 under the new name Egoist. They spent $50 million launching it and it flopped hard. Very hard. It did not sell. That's when they brought out uh, Platinum Mega Weast to try and boost sales. It's when they also introduced the Flanker Cologne Concentrate, which they don't usually do. I don't know of any other um, Flankers to this line. If there is, there could be one, but I don't know if there is or not. Like I said, I've been sitting on this video for a while. And now is the time, you know? I'm going to be testing these on skin. 
I know what they all smell like on skin, but I wanted to try Bois Noir on skin, especially. Now, I, I don't really think that there are, that there are differences in the notes, although there could be. I will read the notes off, off of Fragrantica for Bois Noir. Now, Frank Jack Paul's in 1987. Sandalwood, Ambrette, Rose, Lavender, Brazilian Rosewood, Mandarin Orange, Coriander, and Bourbon Vanilla. For Egoist, the notes are... Brazilian Rosewood, Coriander, Mahogany, Sicilian Mandarin, Cinnamon, Damask Rose, Carnation, Sandalwood, Tobacco, Vanilla, Leather, Amber, and Ambrette. For the Cologne Concentrate. Sandalwood, Cinnamon Spices, Palisanda Rosewood, Vanilla, Woody notes, leather. Okay. We will start at the beginning. And I am excited. This is the first time I will have opened this vial. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that this decant that was sent to me is Buonawa. The guy I bought them off is not cheap. But he is honest, and I would prefer that. You can't buy trust. Um, I've bought many fragrances off him before. He is a Frenchman living in Japan. And if you look, I don't know if you can see the sticker on the back of there. It's got lots of Japanese writing on, so this was obviously bought in Tokyo. I've checked the batch codes. The batch code indicated is an original release from 1990. The eau de toilette is above the Chanel. This is an indicator of a certain age. Um, and they stopped doing that in the early 90s, I believe. So I've dated this to 1990. The Bois Noir is obviously from 1987 because it was, it didn't stick around long, you know. But losing $50 million on a lot, $50 million, a lot of money in fucking 1990, you know. Dear Barbara. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Sorry. First time ever smelling Bois Noir. It's different. I'm getting that familiar woody sort of vibe but it's very much in the background i'm getting a lot more muskiness so they're saying there's ambrette in here and i can smell that straight away whether it's I, it obviously wouldn't be real musk but there's a large dose of something musky in here it's much more musk it's familiar don't get me wrong it's familiar The sandalwood's there. The sandalwood's beautiful. It's a lot more subtle than it is in Ego East. This is a lot more musky, and the lavender's a lot more turned up as well. I'm getting the lavender. This is much more of a fougere. This is much more of a fougere. Like I'm getting bits of patchouli. Like I'm, what, what I'm smelling here, the first thing that my mind went straight to was uh, Fougère Royale. It's got Fougère Royale vibes. There's patchouli in here, absolutely no doubt in my mind, but it's not big. It's just like this darkness. If you know Egoist, Egoist has got that side to it. It's got this darkness about it. It's 100% it is a different fragrance. 
they haven't taken the formula from 1987 and just said, right, we'll release that and call it something else and say it's a different fragrance. It's not. It's tinkered with it. A lot more musky, a lot more lavender. It's got that, it's got that rounded powder classic fougere kind of vibe. That's lovely. It is very lovely. Don't get us wrong. It is very lovely. If you're a Chanel collector, go for it. If you aren't, I don't know that. Maybe it's just because it's my first time ever smelling it, and I've got such a, I've got such an, an attraction, such a, such a, conne a connection to Egoist now, you know. Um, I prefer Egoist to this, but this is different. It's becoming a lot more familiar the longer it's staying on the skin. The wood's starting to come out. The rose is starting to show up. That little bit of the mandarin. I love mandarin and fragrances, but I really hate orange. Dead weird. It's not that weird, but you know what I mean. Egoist is in this fragrance, but it is not the same. This is not the same fragrance. They've definitely played with it. If you're into collecting fragrances for being a collector, it might be worth you looking in. It's high quality, no doubt. It's kept beautifully as well. This is a this is something that you can like I know a few people who have bought from Japan before. They keep their fragrances immaculate. Absolutely immaculately. I've never had a bad fragrance. I've bought a, bought a few fragrances which have like come from Japan, you know. Like I say, off this particular seller, he's a Frenchman living in Japan. What he does is puts his fragrances up for sale about two to three weeks before he goes back to France. Then the sell, and when he gets to France, he posts them. So he posts them around Europe from France. And that's what he's done with these. These this this is lovely, but it's not Egoist. Egoist is in there, but it's a separate fragrance. As I say, reminds me of Fougere Royale, that lavender rose, the ambrette, which gives that musky sort of vibe that's massively amped up. Um, it's vanillic, just, and the mandarin at the top. It is a classic fougere. Beautifully made, beautifully done. Stunning. Next. Egoist. Big boy. This is a 250 mil. It was a partial though. There's about 150 mil left in there, I want to say. I've got my muslin cloth. I will give it a rub to get the fingerprints off and then promptly touch it again with my fingers. Um, Eugene, Eugene inspiring us to get a cloth. I'm not going to put it over my shoulder because what would be the point? But this isn't getting the fingerprints off at all. Oh dear. Anyway, there's my cloth if you want to see it. Very nice. One of my mates gave us. Thank you. But anyway. Need a microfiber cloth, don't I? This is also a splash. And for me, this version of this fragrance is like what Eugene said. I'm sure Eugene has said to me that Egoist is the male counterpart to Coco. And when you put this version of this fragrance on, 100% agree. This smells a lot more like cocoa than the latest version. This is, because I've got the vintage cocoa as well. Like I've got that sitting here. Don't pick that up by the cap. There it is. 
This is a vintage cocoa. I've got another bottle of this as well. Sold one to one of my friends. Um, but this has got a much more prominent rose. This has got a much more prominent sweetness from the mandarin. It's got a little bit of spiciness. There's some dark wood, stuff like mahogany. Um, the cinnamon. There's like a little bit of dryness from the carnation. There's no leather. Uh, there's no um, lavender in Egoist compared to Bois Noir. These are very different when you smell them next to each other. Very different. The sandalwood is the same. Um, the, the mandarin is the same. The rosewood and the rose. But that's about it. It's different fragrance. They've taken parts of Wanawa and they have extract they have extracted them from the perfume and left the sandalwood, the rose, the mandarin, vanilla and some ambre. This is much more familiar as an egoist, you know? Much more familiar as Egoist to me than um, Buonawar is. Buonawar is getting milkier now. And I don't mean like lactonic. I mean, it's like getting that sort of lavender. You know, lavender can be very smooth and creamy. The lavender in Buonawar is beautiful. It is absolutely fantastic. And it's just not present in the Egoist. The Egoist is a lot drier. It's a lot warmer. It's a lot... You get that, you get that cinnamon, you get that dry warmth from the cinnamon. And it, it, it makes a huge difference between the two. You know? The Wanawa keeps throwing up these hints of familiarity. You know, these hints of normalcy, these hints of like you, the, the egoist that you know and love. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. It keeps, I don't want to say like predicting the future, but like as if like you, being able to look back 30 years on, 35 years on, you can see which bits he's taken and which bits he's left behind. The Egoist, the vintage Egoist is opening up a lot more now. As it warms up on the skin, it's rich. It's warm, it's spicy. It's big. It's bold. It's less classic. Which is a very strange thing to say. But in comparison to the Bois Noir, it's less classic. Bois Noir is like a classic fougere. You know? Egoist is more of a like a like a warm, spicy, woody floor, woody fragrance with like a beautiful rose. But lavender in Bois Noir is gorgeous as well. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, I'm going to follow the time, right? Timeline. And next to be released was Chanel's Egoist Cologne Concentrate. What year are you from? Where is your batch code? Oh, God. I think this is, I don't know how long this was out for, but there was only one version of it. I don't think it was out for very long. There is your silver sprayer. There is your frankly, disgracefully cheap lid. The lids from these, you know what? This is a nicer lid than this. This is, ta this is tacky as all fuck for Chanel. Um, apparently the Bois Noir lid was made of real ebony wood. Um, but these really, really aren't. These are like shitty plastic lids that, that, that weigh nothing, you know? They weigh absolutely nothing and they're crap. But they look good. But when you feel them, they fucking dink them. Anyway, I'm going to put a little bit of one spray on and I will explain why. I am not putting a lot of that shit on because that will overpower me scent of the day, which is no shrinking violet either. Don't even like violet. Anyway, cologne concentrate. Oh. Right, fuck it. I'll tell you the truth. This is my favourite. I love this stuff. This is so rich and dense and thick and warm, almost hot. It's much more, it's much more spicy without being fresh. It's warm, spicy, but without being B.O. You know, there's absolutely no hint of anything unclean here. It's just warm and sweet. It's like it, like it, like it knows, like, like it's comforting, but in a powerful way. You know, the vanilla is beautiful and it's very easy to do a bad vanilla because vanillas are so fucking ubiquitous and it's almost as if the brands think that you can just put vanilla in something and any tosser will buy it, you know. It's... I can tell you now what the performance is like. The performance is nuclear. I put three sprays of this on the other week when I wore it and I could smell it all day and into the night and it was gorgeous. This wood, dry, warm... Oh, like there's like a leather in there as well, but it's very soft leather, suede kid leather, you know, very soft, not the type, like the type of leather that like, like it's not stiff, it's very subtle. This is my favorite and I am very happy to have a couple of bottles. I've got this 100 mil and I've also got a 50 mil as well, which I wouldn't part with for the world. The prices online are outrageous. They're a disgrace. <laughs> but this is, you will pay more for worse fragrances. Again, the ingredients are top notch. This isn't as fresh. It's, it's warmer, it's denser, it's richer. It's, I don't want to use the word like, like syrup, but it's got that kind of vis. It's got a viscosity to it. You know, you can tell, I mean, you can tell, I know juice color doesn't indicate anything, but it's like, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an emotional prompt, 
You know, it's like you can't help but like think that if there's darker liquid, then it's gonna be, it's gonna smell a certain way. You know, that feels like it would be like golden syrup. You know, like maple syrup, like very thick, and then that would be a little bit thinner. Um, the Bois Noir isn't very dark at all. It's just, it's light, much lighter. Um, but it's it, again, it's a different fragrance. Lastly, we will come to my latest bottle, my 2019. I get asked all the time about reformulations, and frankly, I deserve it. <laughs> I deserve it because I talk about them all the time. People come to me, people in the comments will come and say, Rich, what do you think of um, the latest version of... Uh, and taste. What do you think of the latest version of Koros? What do you think of the latest version of Fahrenheit? What do you think of the latest version of Bijan Man? Like, what do you think of the latest version of Feminite Dubois? And I, I deserve it because I fucking talk about that shit all the time, so I can't say anything. Um, <clears throat> this Egoist is an indication of the type of answer that I will give. And the answer to that question is usually a lot of modern reformulations are shit, and they are. And a lot of modern reformulations are good, and they are. Something that would indicate a good reformulation for me, I've seen a pattern. And the pattern is, is that if a house has an in-house perfumer, you will get better reformulations. You will get better reformulations. Prada, Cartier, Chanel, Dior, in the most part. Houses like that, that have an in-house perfumer. Because you've got to remember, if the in-house perfumer's been there for a long time, like Daniela Andrier at um, Prada, I always get her and Matilda all mixed up, sorry. Um, but if, you, if you've got, I'm sure it's Daniela Andrea or Daniela Roche. The reformulations are so good that you don't need to worry. For 99.9% for, for, for of people who or just looking for a good friend, you don't need to worry about reformulation. Some others, stuff like, stuff like, um, some others are really bad, you know, some others are really, really bad. And I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head and I can't, um, amen. The amen reformulations before, um, L'Oreal got rid of it. They were really bad. Like when they went from Thierry Mugler bottles to, to Mugler bottles, when they got rebranded, the fragrances got the fragrances got worse. They just did, and they don't have an in-house perfumer. They were just probably given to somebody to reformulate. My theory is a junior, a junior to reformulate them. Um, or a newly qualified perfumer and just said, look, here's some easy work. There's the there's the formula. Here's what you've got to take out. Here's what you've got to do. Just make it smell similar. Whereas with an in-house perfumer, they're working on their own work, so they're going to take better care of it. So that's some context. My thoughts on reformulations. Onto this bottle of Egoist. I had this bottle first. I also believe that whichever whichever version you smell first and, and that you love or you fall in love with or that you like about the fragrance, you're going to like that one, come what may. This is a 2019 bottle. So I will give it a big spray and I will be totally honest. It's pale. It's pale. It's anemic. It's thinner. 
it's nowhere near as rich. You've got to remember there's like nearly 30 years between these two bottles, so it's probably been more than one reformulation between these two bottles. This is... This is... literally a shadow of its former self. It smells good. It smells better than 95, 98% of what you'll smell on the department shop floor. It's better than um, most other designers. It's better than most other niche. But in comparison to what it was, it's anemic. It's a shadow. It's the same shape. It's the same outline. It's the same idea. But it's been put out into the world and presented and made weak i don't want to say bad because it's not bad i wear this and will continue to wear it frankly because i do like it and this is the original one i had but i wish i could sit here i really do wish i, I could sit here and tell you that the modern egoist is as good nearly as good or only five or ten percent off what it used to be it is not it's miles off I'd like to qualify that by saying that the vintage one is so good. So good that it would be hard for any, any divergence from that to maintain the quality. It's not an easy job. I don't envy them at all. And I think Jacques Paul is one of the best perfumers of his generation. And so is his son, Olivia, who is now at Chanel and who will be working on this fragrance as will Mr. Sheldrake, my favourite perfumer. This is a cologne version. It is, it is egoist light compared to what it was. It's like... It's like they've laminated it. They've separated it from the world. You know, like you can pick it up, you can look at it, you can see it, but you can't ever actually get to it because there's something between you and the fragrance. There's, there's a barrier. It's like looking through a window. It's not like being in the same room. You know, you can see everything clear as day. You're experiencing but you're in a different atmosphere. You're in a different environment. It's a different place. There's a disjoint. You may hear, although I'm unaware of any other videos on this topic of, of this fragrance, you will hear other people say that the reformulations aren't that bad. And I can confirm they're not bad but it's not the same fragrance. It's a shame. It's a terrible thing, but it, it's just, that is exactly how I feel. And if you were to smell these, this is one of the problems with YouTube. It's one of the problems with discussing perfume at all in any medium, unless you are smelling what I am smelling. It will be hard for you to know. And I do realize that buying these fragrances is not something that people, are, everybody's willing to do. Not that you, even if you could, would you want to? I'm offering you my opinion. And that's what it is. It's an opinion. My opinion is, is that this fragrance, it certainly ain't what it used to be. 
there are hints and there are indications of what it used to be. But it's like, as it's a, I don't want to go too hard on it because it's not that bad. It's not like, it's not like, it's not a bad fragrance in and of itself. What I'm saying is, is if you compare it like for like to the original, it's, it's not great. It does not smell great. I'll go back to the, I'll go back over all four of them. Um, and I will tell you how I feel about them and what they've all done on my skin. Go back to Buono Noir. It is beautiful. It is absolutely stunning, but it is a completely different fragrance from Egoist. Do not think you're going to be getting an Egoist perfume, but more, you know? You're not getting... You're not even getting that. Those two, Bois Noir and Ego Weast, are different enough to have different names. Which sounds like a, like a mad thing to say, because of course they've got different names, but I can understand how they thought they could get away with changing the name. It's They are not. I'm surprised people have linked them as much as they have. It's the original Ego Weast. It's got... It, there's only bits of Egoist that are in Bois Noir. There's only parts. They are different fragrances. Now, do you want to go out and pay three, four, five hundred pounds for a bottle of Bois Noir? Not sure about that. Not sure about that. Maybe I will. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever smelled it. So I'm thinking to myself... Now what's going through my head is, is it different enough? Do I want this as a vintage collector? Do I want this enough? Do you know what I mean? Um, that's why I went out and bought this. Another Chanel, a Queer de Russie from 1980s. I had the Eau de Toilette. I could have got the Eau de Parfum. The the Les Exclusives. I had the Eau de Toilette Les Exclusives, which I sold when I bought this. But I like, I collect vintage fragrances, vintage versions of fragrances. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you are less than because I own an older bottle. What I'm saying is, is that I think the fragrances are less than. My modern version of Egoist is lesser than the vintage version. And it just is this is not an this is not an attack on anybody's character. I'm not saying throw away your bottles of vintage of, of modern Ego East. I'm not going to be throwing mine away. Just the vintage ones, just just more. Um, Bois Noir is a different fragrance, and I have a decision to make. <laughs> I'm going to use up the rest of that sample. Um, and I am going to see how I feel. But I just sold Fougère Royale. And one of the first things that came to my mind was that is Fougère Royale. It smells like Fougère Royale with the sandalwood and the cinnamon and the rose from Egoist. It's beautiful. Don't get us wrong. It's stunning. Do I need it? I don't know. I need to think about it. Vintage Egoist, that big 250ml bottle, glorious amazing fragrance balance pitched no idea why it well i do know why it flopped people don't understand it maybe it was ahead of its time chanel do that um love it my favorite out of all of them is the cologne concentrate it's so rich it's so sweet without being sugary without being without being like sugar and spice and everything nice it doesn't go like cotton candy um syrupy i mean it has this syrupy vibe but not it's never too much it's blended fucking artfully masterfully 
It's a stunning fragrance. I absolutely love it. It's 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 almost everything I want in a fragrance. It is it is definitely my favorite from the line. I would recommend that you smell it if you haven't. You don't need to buy a bottle, but if you can get some off somebody or find somebody who will part with something like this, like my uh, seller did for me, try it. And then lastly, I loved this Ego East. As you can see, I've put a bit of a dent in it. Like I've worn about five to 10 mil of that. I've, I've worn it a lot and I loved it. And it's that fragrance, it's that version of that fragrance that made me want to get a vintage. That's something that people don't think about now. You don't just go out, like I don't just go out and buy a vintage fragrance because someone's told me about, I mean, I have done that. But I, that's not the only reason I'll do it. Say if I go out and get a bottle of Ego East from 2019 and I smell it and I love it and I do love it. I think to myself, how much better must this have been when it first came out? Was it different? Was it richer? In this instance, it was much better. I still love that Ego East. And if you are a fan of this Ego East and you have this modern version, do not be disappointed or ashamed or feel less than because it isn't. You aren't. The fragrance is, that's what I meant to say. The fragrance is not as strong as it was. It's not as good as it was. The, it's got this air kind of thing to it. It's got this kind of diluted vibe to it. Egoist with water in it. It's not like there's, it's not like they've changed the smell. It's that they've diluted it. It's like they've made it thinner. And I know these are cliches as far as fr vintage fragrances are concerned, but the problem is, is that it's true. You know, it's true. And it's a shame. But. I hope you will take my criticism in the spirit it is meant for this fragrance. Anyway, thank you for watching everybody. I've thoroughly enjoyed waffling for the best part of an hour to you. I hope you will enjoy this fragrance. Well, I hope you will enjoy this video and I hope you will enjoy this fragrance as well. Yes, that's right. Let me know what you think. I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.